Hey beautiful people, my name is Kristen. Thank you for taking time stopping by my channel. Today I am reviewing the books that I read at the end of July from July 15th through the end of the month and it was exceptionally great reading. I I'm, think there was seven or eight but those did include a couple manga books. These are my first ones that I have ever read. My sons were visiting from Virginia and they are fans of several of these both watching the anime and reading them as well and so this is the series they suggested for me Miss Kabashia's um, Dragon Maid and so this is a little cutesy adventure about a human woman who comes across the dragon um, who also has a humanoid form so she can turn into this big wonderful full-blood dragon uh, like this but most of the time she looks like that so you read it this is the front of the book and so it's reading the back to the front um, and it starts chapter one and then you are reading uh, this way so it takes a little while to get used to it or to read the dialogue opposite of what we would normally be reading it but it was fun it's fun and it's just like each chapter is just like a normal adventure like having tea or one of my favorites was playing dodgeball and just little quirky things and there's a lot of things that I would say I, I told my kids I said is this where I need my 12 year old boy humor and they said yes if you have your 12 year old boy humor on you are going to love this you know because I, I work with teenagers and a lot of times you know I don't care how old you get I mean smelly feet and farts and you know bad sexual innuendos when you're little are just funny they're just funny that's my humor I I mean it can be <laughs> so that is that I read two of them then so I could also discuss them with my children and have talking points then I read the second book in the Wheel of Time Robert Jordan's The Great Hunt oh my gosh this is so this is way better than the first one even. I just, and I don't know if that was because, you know, the first one, it's a matchative trilogy. It really has to spend a lot of time defining the world and defining your main characters. And now there is a lot of action that's happening. You know, they are on a hunt for a box that is containing a horn that is going to do some deep magic and bring forth kind of guardians of the past if you will is kind of the way I picture them in my mind and there is a cursed dragon treasure kind of situation um, it's not really dragon treasure but a cursed sword dagger that's involved and so this is the kind of underlying story that goes throughout but it's different characters different scenes different uh, new characters and different things we are learning about this world that Robert Jordan has created and I also love the aspect that kind of like a lot of different epic fantasies there's portals and you can go in and out of different realms and realities so to speak and so that's always interesting to me to try to figure it out both kind of scientifically if any of that makes sense or you know based off of our own reality in our own world like what correlates what's different how does that operate how does the author explain that and it's fun and you get very attached to some of the characters it's just it this is a really good series so that's my little plug I think as I go on I will be able to share less and less about the story because then it'll be missing the backstory but I'm really enjoying Wheel of Time so far next I read Blake Crouch's Upgrade. This is his new release, so this counts as definitely my new release for the month. But this is a story that uh, there are ways to actually change your DNA to become stronger, more efficient, kind of not age or have better strength or, you know, to, to basically alter humans to become superhumans if you will and so it talks 
the story about the ethics, about some failures of the past, about people who are trying to use this for their own benefit. And throughout, of course, you have the main character who doesn't have all the information and doesn't have all the connections and doesn't know kind of what's going on. And we're, as the readers, figuring out a lot of this stuff as we go along and how that's going to come together and what does it mean and, uh, you know, how is he going to succeed and, you know, save the day and save the world. And <laughs> so, Blake Crouch does a really outstanding job of this in all of his books, right? I look really forward to reading, um, what's the one, the recursion that I haven't read yet. So this one is basically centered around human DNA and upgrading mankind. So that's, I think, a very good description. I don't know that I would want too much more going into that. All of my reviews are very spoiler free, but you can always feel free to leave me a comment uh, below if you ever have questions. <laughs> Uh, Beach Read, Emily Henry. I had really been looking forward to this. I think her people we meet on vacation as well as book lovers are both five star and I am not a romance lover. I, you know, totally am very, I think, pretty critical on my romances. Uh, uh, to get a five star is, I, I don't know that I have any other five star romances to be perfectly honest. And this one is as well. So another five star romance book. And the story, because it's Beach Read, is two different kind of writers who end up in beach houses and they kind of get into a little competition with one another. And of course, it's a romantic interest because one male is male and female and, um, you know, heterosexual writers that are challenging one another. The one normally writes more literary fiction and, uh, you know, thriller type books and one writes more romance, almost kind of the fluffy stuff that we were talking about. And so they kind of switch and the one's gonna be more serious and the one's gonna be more happily ever after than they normally do and see who can get published or succeed in writing each other's t traditional genres, if that makes sense. And that was just a lot of fun because then you have, again, You've got the beach, but it's not so much the beach as it is writing and books and being part of that world, which she does so, so well in every single one of her books that I've read so far. They all have that kind of literary, kind of literary tie-in to their characters, and that's one of my favorite things. So if that's one of your favorite things, I recommend any of the three Emily Henrys that I mentioned. I can even leave them all linked below, or not linked below, but mentioned below so you can search them from wherever you pick them up, whatever your format is. I also, for another new release, got to last month's, which I didn't get to read in July, but The Wedding Dress Sewing Circle. This is a by Jennifer Ryan. This is a historical fiction based on true, true events, although the characters in here are fictitious, but the events or the sewing circle actually existed. It was a group of women who were trying to re, re, repurpose wedding dresses for brides who were getting married during the war, but there was a clothing rationing going on and there was no new materials being produced to create these dresses. So they were taking donations and gathering up old things and recreating them into beautiful new things. And consequently, several brides would be ending up wearing the same dress. And I just think it is a lovely, lovely thing that honestly I kind of wish happened even without wars and rationings. I just love the symbolism of all that. I think mothers passing down their dresses or relatives passing down their dresses or even friends passing their dresses is just a really, really beautiful thing. And then it was also interesting hearing the women talking about the historical events and relationships and things which obviously did occur during those times. So really, really good read. Um, I give it at least a good solid four stars. Um, just very entertaining and, and fun and wanted to know what the story was as I was reading it. Finally, I read TJ Klune's Under the Whispering Door. I have not read any other. I did not read The House in the Cerulean Sea yet, but this is a story that is in between living and dead. So after you die, you go through this transition and into this mystery house with the 
kind of place in between that life and death and there are wonderful characters and things that happen that allow our main character that we're following through the book to make peace and he starts out he is he is like Ebenezer Scrooge he is just cranky and annoying and you know nobody's going to come to his funeral because he's been basically an ass to everybody his entire life and just worried about work and bottom line money and all this stuff that you can't take with you and so there is a story trying to show hope and transition I would note that TJ Klune, they want us to make sure that we know that it's even stated that they say God is a human construct and oh, when it's talked about resurrection, it's like, oh no, Jesus didn't, isn't one of the resurrected. And so that was very pointed out in the book. So. If you're talking about a book that's supposed to be giving hope to the afterlife as a Christian, that feels like a lost opportunity. Uh, and I would have wanted to know, not that this is an anti-Christian book, because I wouldn't say that. What I would say is it is another point of view. And I respect that, but I kind of like to know that ahead of time because uh, it just, allows me to be in the right mindset, if you will. So, and if people are going to be really offended by that, then they don't have to necessarily pick up this book. You know, they don't have to hate on it or, or, or experience in that way. And I do want to kind of go out and say, I am, didn't make me think about that. And I really appreciated that maybe even more than the story, which I really, really liked was taking time to really think that through because I know in the back cover that I had read, it had talked about TJ Klune being queer himself and how they really felt like it was important to write into their stories, queer characters, which are very much in here. So the all, pretty much the majority, I would say, of the main characters are in fact queer. And so to me, I kind of wrestled with, well, does that exclude Christianity in the sense of God and Jesus? Because I feel like that is a battle, if you will, that's going on in today's society. And for me personally, it breaks my heart because I do not believe that's the answer. I believe that God created us and that Jesus loves us all and that Jesus's resurrection is real and so if this is a fantasy fictitious whimsical story and yet like I said the missed opportunity of if there is a hurting person and a grieving person that is such a powerful answer to me that it needs a follow-up book <laughs> <laughs> where Jesus is the resurrection and the power and the answer to the final resting place, if you will. But I can totally, totally, I can go to Harry Potter and I can go to <laughs> Whispering Door and I can go to Golden Compass and all these other never ending stories and all these places where these things are different and magical and whimsical and fun and that doesn't bother me at all. But that's my thoughts, my recommendations and reviews and the things that I would totally want to know kind of setting into the story ahead of time. So you can leave me a comment if, if that is helpful or TMI or, uh, you know, if you think I've totally got it wrong, I totally respect that too. This is why we all get to have different opinions about books and we get to talk about it. And I hope if nothing else, you understand that I have respect and love for all and open to dialogue and I'm open to disagree. And I think that's a beautiful lost thing in today's society. So that's okay. And even if you want to disagree, I still love and care for you. Appreciate my viewers, appreciate you taking time to stop by. Wish everybody that you find the books that are magical and fill you up and inspire you. And if any of these do, leave me a comment below. If you've read any of these, let me know that. I look forward to chatting again soon. Y'all take care. Appreciate.